Stories bring lessons, laughter, unforgettable experiences, and memories that far outlive the storytellers themselves. Great stories happen to those who can tell them. This is the Jack and Around podcast, hosted by two-time Academy of Country Music Award winner and master storyteller Jack Ingram. In these open dialogue podcasts, Jack digs into the personal stories of a wide variety of special guests, including your favorite music, sports, and entertainment personalities. And now to introduce today's guest, here is podcast producer Matt Pivato. Thank you, Mr. Rowdy Yates. Today's guest, Roger Clemens, was one of, if not the most dominant pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball. He was the first pitcher to strike out 20 in one game, only pitcher to have done it twice, which he did 10 years later. Clemens is an 11-time All-Star. In career stats, he ranks ninth with the most wins, third with the most strikeouts. Most importantly, he has the hardware to show it with seven Cy Young Awards, the most in the history of Major League Baseball, and he has two World Series rings to show for it. Before we begin, some quick housekeeping notes provided below in the description are bios and links to the entire podcast catalog to listen on your favorite audio platform, to connect on social media, and to visit the website located at jackandroundpodcast.com. Last but not least, if you enjoy this podcast, please subscribe and ring that bell to be the first to know about new episodes and segments. So here's Jack and Roger walking in for one of Jack's shows in Tomball, Texas, as they are talking about former Presidents Bush 41 and 43. What was her secret? I got a horseshoe pit in my backyard because of 41. Oh, really? He come over and threw horseshoes a few times. Oh, no joke. Yeah. What was 41 or or 41 wife's nickname? Like, uh, Tranquility. Yeah, she that was, was her? Tranquility and he was Timberwolf. Was she like that? Uh, what was that movie that they had with... Oh, Driving Miss Daisy. No, yeah. Driving yes, Miss Daisy. Of course, like that, but also the one where it was a no, secret no, no, service. No, no, not Driving Miss Daisy. It was Driving Tess, right? Driving Tess? No, it was... Guarding Tess. Guarding Tess. Guarding Tess. Yeah. Guarding yeah. Tess. What was her name? Nicholas Cage and uh, the, the redhead. The badass actress. Oh, Pod, yeah. say hi to Mama Bear. Hi. How are you? He just, he just killed it. What's up? See, they're in Sedona, believe it or not. Hey, make us, make us some jewelry. <laughs> Come on, we're getting, we need, we're we getting, need, the, we're getting, the, we're going live here across the nation. I mean, look at, look at this, look at this place. Look at, look how he, look how he rolls at night, huh? No, you, no, you can't, because we're going to. No, say, you can rent it on Pornhub in about six months. <laughs> What's perfect? Huh? Jack ended with "Baby's Got Back Tonight." It was unbelievable. <laughs> Jim was dancing. Yeah, he's icing so down Cheryl. over there right now. Look at him. Hi, Deb. Deb, Hi, how are you, dear? Good. Get a haircut. Get a haircut. Hey, Casey, get a haircut. Deb, how old are you? <laughs> she don't age. Okay. Are you like four, right. Are you like thirty seven? Okay. Yeah. I'm finally the only adult. In hey, the we're room. behaving them for a Monday night. It's civil right now. Uh, I'll call you after. We got business. <laughs> Can't, cause this is going uh, only shown in Canada. Is this kind of like what George's interviews are like? Oh, every, every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these are like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was a good deal, though, man. I left Were you out. there when I was there? Yeah, Kiba. Oh, yeah. Kiba. Oh, one night, right? So, I, I was up at the... We're not running it. I saw George 43 pubes on a soap. <laughs> <laughs> All I right. stayed in that we're room. Gonna, we're going to cut that. <laughs> we'll, we'll edit that, too. And I was like, those are fucking hey. President Bush's teams. <laughs> it's weird when you're like in somebody else's space and you go, ooh. Yeah. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh, there you go. Just soda you then with that. Box. Yeah, I just need a splash of soda. Yeah. We're going to sound like Harry Carey here in a minute on that. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, it's the bottom of the fifth. And the uh, bases are loaded. And you know what? So am I. See, man, that's that would never happen now. All the seats in Tiger Stadium are blue. Long pause. Except for the orange ones. <laughs> no shit, Harry. There's a drive. It might be. It. And you're listening on radio. About ready to drive off the freeway if you're a Cubby. <laughs> it, there's a drive. It might be. It could be. Oh, the shortstop hauls it in. <laughs> <laughs> He's hammered. He's got Did you guys up. ever listen to that stuff in the dugout? Well, we turned the TV guys off and put him on. My buddy was so excited he got called to the big leagues. 
he's with the Cubs. He's like, man, I'm in. And he goes, my parents, everybody's watching. We can't wait for Harry Carey to call my name. I'm going to come out of the bullpen and relieve. Harry's up there. And he goes, um, sixth inning. He's like, yeah, we'll call the bullpen. <laughs> you sound hammered already. Yeah, he's hammered. Call the bullpen. And um, what what numbers? He's yelling to the guy helping him. Number, what number is it? 56. Who, who's? How? Oh. Cubby fans, this is Dennis Lamp coming in to pitch. He wasn't even good in Triple A. <laughs> that, that's what he gets to go with with his parents. His poor parents. He goes, I was all excited. Harry Carey's going to talk me up. Ah, he kind of sucked the whole way up. <laughs> How do he you went, fail upwards? A one, a two. Oh, and just walked six of my best friends. Somebody brought him a six pack. And just walked six of my best friends. <laughs> so, hold on. When was the first major league game? Hold on. So I was watching something earlier today that freaked me out. So you had never been to a major league ballpark until you showed up to play in one? Is that true? Well, my dad took me to my first big league game. It was at Crosley Field in Cincinnati. I got to see the big red machine. So that was really the first. When you were a kid. When I was a kid. I was nine years old, and I got to see – you know, that's when Bench was there and Pete Rose and Perez and I mean it was a big Morgan. red machine. Joe Morgan. I didn't know I didn't know You was, didn't know what that was. No, I, I didn't know. I just knew they were pro ball players and this is really cool. And Crosley Field, you know, Jack, it wasn't a it wasn't a stadium. I mean How many people did it hold? Fifteen? Yeah. Maybe maybe a little more. So but to answer your question But it was big league. Yes, big leagues, absolutely. Uh, my, mine was a great experience. I got called to big leagues, Fenway Park, right? Pitched, I don't know, two games in AAA. And I get called to – You the, come out of college. Came out of Texas. And you only spent two games in AAA? I had 12 games in the minors. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I don't say that out loud because my boys get on me all the time. I talked to them about riding a minor league bus, and they're like – Oh, it's it's kind of funny. Kill, here. Yeah, like, yeah. really, man? Two games? I would kill the guys in spring training, too, because, you know, once you become a veteran in, you, in spring training, the road trips, you know, sometimes Florida or Arizona, you know, Arizona's short trips, but I only trained in Florida. But there's sometimes three hour bus rides, and the bus would be leaving, and my day would be basically over. I get in there at 7 a.m., get all my work done before you go, and then I'm going to head back and go to Disney with the troops or go golf or whatever. But the bus is in Before the parking. Before game time? No, no. This they're on a road trip. This is a road trip. Boy, the the team's going to say say I'm with the Yankees. Okay. We're in Tampa, and they got to go play in Bradenton. So they got to. And he's on days off. Yeah. Oh, you see, yeah. I'm not, not pitching. pitching. I'm not pitching it. I'm pitching. And then once you become a veteran, the pitching coach usually takes care of the veteran guys. It's the same so you, and they want you to pitch at home. So they want me to pitch in Tampa. They want me to pitch in front of us Red Sox. <laughs> they want you to pitch home games. They don't want you on a bus riding three hours. So they look after you and take care of you. And I and I take care of them under the table, you know, pay them. Here, here, here coach, go get you a nice steak dinner, right? So for fun. <laughs> That's I'm, old school, man. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, now? yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely it does. Good. So now you go to the parking lot, and the bus is there getting ready to leave to go. You know, it's leaving at ten o'clock. It's leaving at ten. You know, and our fielding practice is over as pitchers and everything. And just for fun, just to bust the other guys' balls on the on the uh, you know Jeter and Posada and all the everyday guys are on that bus. They're taking a long ass road trip. I'd be rolling out to the parking lot to get my car to leave to go golf or go to Disney with Orlando. the troops. My day, yeah, my day's <laughs> over. But um, for fun, since I ain't been on a bus in fifteen years. <laughs> I, I get I take two steps on this new bus and look up bus and I go, damn, these things are fancy. They got AC and TVs and a bathroom and like you all the other everyday guys are like, Rocket, get the fuck off the <laughs> be, bus be and get your ass off the piece of you. <laughs> so they wear me out and uh So did you say Jeter and Jeet and Parsada, my catch. All those you know, guys yeah, they wear you out, man. That but, but they're they, on the bus. Oh yeah, they're going they're going to play that day. And uh, on on that road trip, but uh, yeah, I think I had twelve games in the minors. But you're right, you got to start. You got you, you to go back because at the University of Texas, won the final game in '83 national championship at Texas, beat Alabama, get drafted by the Boston Red Sox, and I'm like, where, where, where am I going? Because so how green were you? Very green. I go right from a team that you know at Texas where we rebuild and and. Uh, uh, you know, we had a saying, we don't rebuild, we reload at Texas. 
That's because Texans are cocky. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be when you win. You have to be. <laughs> and you have to be there when you play for Coach Gus, who is the winningest coach in NCAA history, right? Yeah. He, he looks at you as a – if you eight, don't say that, you don't belong on the team. That's right. 18. Yeah, we still have that sign there. Uh, the timid in the week. You don't belong there. So, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. We're at Peanut Gallery over here. Uh, hey, somebody somebody hey. hook him out of here. This is Jim. If, if anybody hears the Peanut Gallery, that's Jim West. He's a good friend of both of ours. Use, use that lightly, friend. <laughs> use, use that lightly, friend. I mean, friend. good friend, like, you know. <laughs> lightly. Use it, and and he went to Texas State, which is our minor league uh, team for <laughs> University of Texas. You played twelve games with his school. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, get drafted, and uh, end up going through the minor leagues pretty quick. Twelve games, get the call up to go to Fenway Park. Is that a record? I don't know about that, but it was it was nice. I know that it, I didn't spend a lot of time. Who else? I was ready. Who else would have been close to that? I, mean, I imagine that back dude from then, Atlanta? Jack. I, no, no, no. I, I, guys back then, probably like one of the biggest names to come out of Texas as a teenager and went right to the big leagues and won probably, you know, now you look back, it doesn't look like it was a great move for him because it, it, would, it ended short was David Clyde, left-handed remember pitcher. Him. Remember David Clyde? Mm -hmm. And uh, threw extremely hard. I was a young player in Texas, so I got to go watch him pitch against our school. He played at a, a high school uh um, Remind me to bring up town. that whole hard pitching thing later. Cause, Absolutely. Because it really does – wow me that you talk about others as if they were hard pitchers and yeah not yourself yeah so so but you know hey i mean you, for for me like again when i when j dub and i come out and watch you work like we watch you do your thing and i watch your emotions and your heart and your the person that you are i the same people see me on the mound being intimidating intimidating for me is like when i talk to jack nicholas about being intimidating he wasn't like, when he came on the scene, he was kicking Arnie's butt, and he wasn't a fan favorite. He was kicking Arnold Palmer's right. butt. But when you call – when somebody's intimidated, it's because they win. They're good at what they do, and they win. You're not – you can throw 100 miles an hour and, not, and be a loser, not win. It's not very intimidating. And, uh, you know, I'm a power pitcher. I'm not a power thrower. I don't throw. I pitch. Big difference. So, when I don't have my 98, and I only – my shoulder's barking a little bit, and I'm not feeling up to par – and I'm throwing 92. I feel, I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find a way to win because I know where. You know, for the most part, I know where the baseball is going. No different than what you, what you do. You go out there every night. You got to bring it every night. You're performing. I'm throwing in front of 55,000 people in these stadiums, and I'm on stage. And when I go out there and lay an egg, and I'm driving home, and I just got knocked out of the game in the third inning, it's the worst feeling. The worst. So to, yeah, it's the worst. I always say, like, man, I've got. 22 and a half hours to think about doing the only job I have in an hour and a half. Same with baseball, I would think. It's like, man, every fifth day, yeah, you got an hour, you got three hours or, or two hours to do your to do what you're on this earth to do. And if you and if you lay that egg, you got yeah. you got another five days to think I'm the worst. Sorry, <laughs> so bitch. If you ever. if you love what you do and you care about it, that's why I tell people. You know, over 24 years, physically I got you. Mentally I'm going to crush you. And then emotions come into play. Now, I tell people in 24 years, I showed my ass out there a handful of times. But like What's my mother your said. Ass? Just getting um, pissed off at yourself? No, you know, getting in an argument with an umpire, another player. Uh, you know, you know, just, just, you know, being maybe letting your emotions get the best of you, which you try and check those. But – you know what? I care. I care. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing I tell people is that I'm I'm proud of that city I'm wearing on my chest, and I care about what I did. When you guys are coming to watch me work, whether it's J Dub and Toby in the dugout eating a hot dog or Frito pie when I'm right. out there trying to kill myself, and ask <laughs> and, and they and they got Frito pie on their chest. Hey, how you doing out there, Rock? I go. I'm I'm dying. It's a hundred degrees. I'm dying. But don't worry about it. I'm 45 years old. You look great out there. I'm Way good. to go. Go I'm get good. it. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> But so uh, no, in all, all seriousness, you, you, I mean, like I said, when I, when I get the opportunity to come watch you work and see your emotions and to hear you and watch you play a guitar, um, and, it, and it's nothing about how they always say, you know, athletes want to be musicians, musicians want to be athletes. Mm -mm. I, I just love, you know, it's similar to when I played like in the AT&T and the Bob Hope or even in the Diamond Resort event uh, a couple months ago where I'm playing with the girls. 
And it's they're I'm, I'm playing with them when they're a, it's an official round for them. It's not a pro am. They're right. actually so when they make bogey, I get to watch their expressions. I get to watch them after they make birdie and how they come and how back. They rebound. How they rebound. I, I love that part of it. I mean, it'd be like if you could stand behind the mound and call pitches for me for an entire game for a three hour ball game. And uh, and then I get to come and watch you ten feet from what you do. I mean, that's what I was telling J Dub today. I mean, this is good stuff. I loved to hear your lyrics. I I, I list I like detail. I and so too. I, and and I so I think that's what I like the most about uh, performers like yourself is I like listening to details. I love to hear your stories. They crack me up. You have a great sense of humor. You have a great heart. And uh, uh, but. Uh, like I said, most of my friends I've surrounded me are that way. They're great people. Everybody that I've ever been around you, that you're with, they're they're, they're, funny. they're real. They're, they're real. Are, well, they just got a, th- real. a certain thing. Like, they're, you know, they're, they're real. And if you're not in the room and somebody says something about one of my friends and they're not with me, I'm gonna call them out on it. If they hit below the belt. It's just like I, how I lead my life. And whether it be some dude, you know, saying this or that about me or I did this or that and you know it's not true, sometimes you have to stand up for it. Some people don't like it, but you stand up for it. And well, you know like, what's funny, man, is, is that I have – so I never knew you when you were playing. I met you after that in Vegas, which was – I called my brother. I was like, dude – <laughs> well, I met you first with Bench at yeah. the ins- – what's the one they Inspired. have at the Woodlands? Yeah, it was, uh, it was in Ministaff back then, I think. At Ministaff. And That's it was right. so funny because I'm, I'm always – like I just like funny shit. <laughs> and you came up – we were on the 18th hole, and I had been sitting there all day with Johnny Bench. I was driving the cart, and he was in the passenger seat. And people keep coming up and asking him for an autograph. And he kept declining. And from my world, like, yeah, you, you don't decline yeah, autographs, right. man. You just do it. You're glad people are still asking. Yeah. And so, and I was kind of like, mm, mm. Oh, <laughs> like it hurt me. It hurt my feelings <laughs> every time it happened because yeah, it absolutely. happened a lot. A little bunch of kids. And I was like, hey, man. And so we met you and you, go, you came up and you go, hey, I'm the rocket. And I go, hey, I'm the jack. <laughs> <laughs> And we talked for a minute, yeah. and you let me wear your ring, and we did the whole bit, and it was great. And I go, that guy's a good dude. I just didn't want to kiss you on both cheeks. Makes you feel like you're in the mob. Kiss, kiss me on the <laughs> mouth next time. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, hold on. So, but, so but, when, but, so when I left, days. when we left that, when we left that, uh, that tee box, it was number eighteen at whatever course that was, Woodlands. And Bench goes, "Hey, man, I know you." Like he could tell. He goes, "I know you're nervous." And don't like it that I'm not signing autographs. And I was like, well, hey, man, it's just not my world. Like, in my world, we sign autographs to anybody and everybody. Mm-hmm. And he goes, remember that dude, Rocket, we just met? I go, yeah. He goes, last year he made 85000 bucks a pitch. The best year I ever had was 85000 bucks for the year. And it was a – it made me understand, like, the difference between how that – all of that works if, like – how yeah, that, so so I'll explain it to you easy. So how it works is that you thank the guys that played before you. I was the highest paid player, I think, in the league seven times. My agents did. So when I got to the Red Sox at 21 years of old uh, out of the University of Texas, my first two years, it was like, okay, I got to do this. I got to make some money to get paid for my mom's town home, pay, get her a new car. So it was it was kind of about the money. Then, then I won 24 games and won my first Cy Young, and we go to the World Series. And I was used to winning at Texas. And after that, my agent said, listen, you handle your stuff on the field. We'll handle the business part of it off the field. So you had a great that, agent. That's, that's what, I had a great agent, but I also knew, I already knew, uh, the finance part of it. And then once I knew I got my feet in the ground, I punched out 20 and won 24 games. Then from that point on, it was about winning championships again. And you never worried about your talent disappearing on you. No, I mean, I did the work ethic. I had a, I had a saying, and um, they've used it. I actually have the sign in uh, my little guy's, my grandbaby's uh, playroom. It says, uh, it's a quote for me. It says, my only day off was the day I pitched. I love that. Yeah. That's the only, like, the only time I feel so, normal Yeah, is the last hour and a half you saw me. Yeah. Everything else, like, it, I just, I don't know what I'm doing. 
Now I can try to figure it out. I can try to write songs. I can try to run. I can try to. But man, the only time I feel really in the zone, yeah, is when I'm on my own mound. So <laughs> check this out. So I tell J Dub this too when we see. You know, we obviously have a bunch of friends that are musicians like yourself. I always wonder that when you're playing that guitar and you're doing a solo or whatever in between your your lyrics, I just think that you guys hear something in your ear. You're just something. It's a different. It's a different sound almost to what when I hear you guys playing that you guys hear. Uh, it's the you know it's a different zone when I'm on the mound. I don't hear the popcorn guy. I don't hear the people screaming. I don't hear in a visiting ballpark them screaming my name, chanting my name. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's really like blinders, and you know, you're it's tunnel vision. It's almost like that golfing movie where, uh, for the love of the game, or not, and I was yeah, a Dan baseball Jenkins movie, or... where the fairway just opens up for him, the concentration, the focus. You know, I always tell the boys. I got my two youngest boys playing still, and I tell them their focus, uh, just just their focus alone, will, will will make them better than a handful of guys there being able to focus because everybody's going to be screaming, and hollering at you, whatever. I can put it together. So and tonight, and I, and I, it's the same way. Like, so well, because of COVID and all the, you know, like I'm, I'm used to playing 125 shows a year or whatever. Right, 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 right. And you get in a zone where you start the show and you're already in this zone where you're like, you're picking up from last night. But as it is now, I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to remember the words to the freaking song. Yeah. And so tonight, I knew I was playing in front of you, and not necessarily JW. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's your, that's a, that's your worst quit, critic. But I'm just saying, there were moments when I felt like I fell into the zone, and I wasn't thinking about you. I wasn't thinking about him. I wasn't thinking about my mom. Or, my mom and dad were there, and I was talking shit like I was doing yeah, my yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you fall into that zone, it's like it's like you're flying, and when you come back out of it and you don't know why you got to find a way to get back in is that what pitching is like it is i mean it's it's like um when i warm up and it's horrible like i'm not throwing strikes i can feel my arm my my my, my hamstrings fixing it feels like it's gonna go and i'm not and it's not good i know that i don't have to worry about that and this is what i uh, i translate to the younger players that when when i have my bullpen session before the game and i warm up and it's not good and I come, I come through the gate out of the bullpen, and like uh, Brad Osmus is looking at me, going, <laughs> "You know, this is gonna be get the long man ready. This is about a two inning job right here." And I said, "Dude, stay with me. Let's get through the anthem. Once we get in front of the bright lights, I'll come in front of the crowd. They're gonna help. They're gonna. I need, I need them to help me through this. That's why I think that I wouldn't be very good at these times with COVID, where there's nobody in the stands. I'm not sure that yeah, I you would. would. Yeah, you would. Well. You only, they, hold, they, hold on. they pipe in the sound. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Let's not forget you only had 12 minor league games. Yeah, yeah. Because I guarantee you, a guy like you, that's yeah. why I like being around well, you. That's why I like being around the best of the best. Is like, I guarantee you, whether it's 10 or 10,000, you'll yeah, find champions a way find. I'm yeah. not tooting my own horn. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. when there's 50 people, yeah, man, yeah. I should be playing in front of 50,000, but I'm not. And somebody in that audience hasn't seen me ever play. So that goes all the way back to what I tell people when people say that you're God-given talent. I, I believe in God-given talents, but I believe that the God-given talent that he gave me was hard work, your work ethic, and know that when I, when I was – my pops died when I was nine. I was raised by two strong-willed women. You know, all these people Who? out here with all the noise, my mother and my grandmother. I watched my mother work three jobs here in Houston. I stocked coolers at a convenience store on the weekends with her where everybody in my high school was partying. I didn't have a vehicle. Thank God we want to live three miles from the high school because after my high school coach always talked about it, I told my backpack and I'd jog home after baseball practice. Three miles every day? Yep. Did you go through? Three miles. Did you run yeah. to school and yeah. back home? Uh, I, I would I would uh, be fortunate <laughs> to get, get a couple ride. rides, yeah. <laughs> A couple of gals, a couple, 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 gal, couple gals would swing by and get me, you know. But they couple wouldn't wait. Gals. For, yeah, she wouldn't. She wouldn't wait. They wouldn't wait for me after practice. I mean, you know, let's be real. They wait so, for me after the game, though, no, bitch. Maybe after the game, yeah. If I did good. If I didn't walk too many guys. So, uh, but uh, but uh, my and my grandmother the same way. My grandmother always said, "Hey, if you're a ditch digger, be the best damn ditch digger you can possibly be." So I was raised. Then you'll by, be the foreman. Yeah, I was raised by strong-willed women, and that's. That's uh, 
that's what gave me the pride and the discipline that I have that what's very important about your job and your work. Now, I had a great supporting cast with my four boys and the wife I have of keeping everybody together. And, yeah, man, and, you made a great choice. With yeah, you. got lucky. Every time so, I'm with you guys, I'm like, yeah, she's a she, badass, she gets it. Man. Yeah, she gets it. And uh, she's an artist, loves her moon and stars. And I all love it that, that she's in yeah, Sedona yeah, yeah, making she loves jewelry. It. She <laughs> loves that stuff, man. So, so I was lucky there, and, and uh, she's my biggest pitching coach, too. I mean, she would get on me. But she didn't know f- first couple of years. She would ask my catchers, what can I tell him? What can I tell him? She, and, and my catcher, like Richie Gebbin, would say, you know, he walked four guys, tell him to quit walking, guys. So I get in the car. I was like, damn, that was pretty good, though, right? And she goes, yeah, it was a great game, but quit walking, guys. I'm like, how did she know? That? I mean, where did this come from? So, That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. She's like, she's getting inside Okay, let me ask you. I, 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 I've always wondered that because – so my brother played golf in college. He was really good. He could have Love it. maybe gone pro. He's always told me, like, hey, man, I won one tournament. The guys that are going pro won the rest. But having played golf and, and done and even with me, well, it's not the same with music. Like, I won't fuck up twice. More or less. But what is that as a pitcher when, when the game's on the line and, and it's – and it really is – it really does matter. And you make a mistake, and you lose your confidence, and you go, I'm not throwing another fucking ball. I'm not, I'm not making another mistake. That's the part which golf and baseball is – it does remind me of the same thing of like every time no, I've ever – great. it's a great question, Jack. So here's the deal. J-Dub or in my car. I mean, I can go right to a, a, a life experience that just happened today. J-Dub and I are driving over to watch you perform tonight. My youngest one calls me. He's a second baseman, Detroit Tigers. Miguel Cabrera, Cabrera is their DH first baseman towards the end of his career. When he was 19 years old, I think it was in 2003, I'm pitching in what I to believe was going to be my retirement year. I announced my retirement after the season. I'm pitching my final World Series game. 56,000 people in Miami uh, at that football stadium. It was transformed into a baseball stadium. And my very first pitch of the game, I knew it was special because the whole place lit up. Like my very first pitch, I almost couldn't see the hitter. There were so many flash bulbs. Get through the first two guys, little base hit and, and, and a walk. This 19-year-old comes up, and I battle him, almost getting punch him out with my split finger. End up throwing a 3-2 backdoor two-seamer. Runs back over the plate. He punches it. It lands is in the first. It lands in the first row of the right field bleachers, three nothing, Florida, in what was going to be my last game. Uh, I'm stepped off the mound. Place is going ballistic. Can't even hear my thoughts. Standing behind the mound. So do you start panting? Did you, did you, did you get hot on the back of the neck? No. Like, what I said was to myself, I was like, "Well, this is a hell of a way to go out. <laughs> yeah, this is going. Man. This is going to be fun. I'm going to get pulled in the second inning of my final start, and this is how I'm going to retire. This ain't happening." Seven shutout innings later. We're tied up going into extra innings. And so what so, was that? And, and I said I was not going to let it. So it's just, again, it's th- is things it, that you draw on that you – Is it spirituality? Is it is – it, No. Is it just willpower? I th- I, yeah. I think it's more willpower than, than – even at my advanced age at that time. How old were you? Uh, shoot, well, I played till I was uh, – I unretired. 70? I, yeah, 70. <laughs> there's a video out there. It looks like – there's a guy. I, the I want to pitch. I called you and I go, hey, man <laughs> – how do you how do you get used to not playing much or not? You go. I told him, hey, no, you no. Go, hey, man, I had I a lot of the practice. Astros, the only way I'm coming back, and I said, you got Jack singing the national anthem at one of the playoff games. I will come out of the bullpen for you. <laughs> Which, by the way, was one of my best moments with you. So I come down to play. It wasn't the anthem. It was the uh, God bless America. God bless America. And I'm I didn't know you were there, and I'm standing right behind Verlander's pitching. And it's a seventh inning against the Yankees? Yeah, or, absolutely. Because the seventh inning yeah, stretches absolutely. next. And you go, go hey, man. Because he threw a, he threw a strike <laughs> and goes, bam. And I go, whoa. And you go, hey, only difference between me and him <laughs> is that if that was my pitch, you'd hear you hear it. You're like bacon in a frying pan. <laughs> bacon in a frying pan. I was like, <laughs> you still could play, man. Yeah. Could you be a closer? No chance. Come my, on. my elbow and shoulder would follow it. If Jim was hitting, I could. Could you be a mid reliever? No, not now. Could I mean, you be nothing? I Asian dog years. I mean, nothing. I did it. No, I couldn't. It happened. Do it. So yeah, it's over. Uh, the, but that thank feeling God never leaves. 
No, and and like I said, when when I when I was young and I got to watch Tom Seaver, he was my teammate, the ultimate power pitcher, and I got to watch Nolan Ryan, and I got to watch Bob Gibson, and I got to do similar to this right what we're doing now. I got to sit down for twenty minutes with Don Drysdale, and I got to golf with Yogi Bear. Yeah, man, who's a guy I would love to throw to. Yeah, well, I was about to say, was he a great catcher? Yogi, I would have got all the high strikes back then because he never squat down. If you see the old school, he's like up here. You he could never squat, right? And Because uh, of knees yeah, or what? Yeah. So I told the story. Like Everybody talks about yogiisms. Well, Yogi was my partner at the Bob Hope tournament for a couple of years. And one of the best were we were on the driving range. I knew it was getting close to our tee time. And uh, he was done hitting balls and walking behind me. And a bunch of people were around there wanting to take photos. And so I tried to stop him. I go, Yogi. I go, what time is it? He looked at me. He goes, "Rocket, right now? <laughs> no, no, tomorrow." So the, all tomorrow. of that was natural. <laughs> natural. I had him lean down. We were so on he was the, a natural genius no, idiot. But hey, thirteen. No, there's no idiot about this boy. That's what about, I mean. But, so but yeah, were those jokes but, like Seinfeld esque? Or well, or did he, he just let him ride. He just let him ride. So <laughs> one of my best is. Um, my, one of my. By his, the way, one anybody is, listening, I te- we're going to edit that out. I think yeah. called Yogi Bear a fucking yeah, yeah, idiot. Yeah. Thir- <laughs> yeah, thirteen championship rings, one for each finger. Yeah, and we're, thumb good. And, we're good. We're good. Hey, how about fucking looking out for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look. <laughs> edit that, please. So, uh, thirteen championships, and uh, what what is one of Yogi's best ones is uh, nobody goes there anymore. It's too it's crowded. Too crowded. That's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, so here's one other one. So I'm, I've got like a 12 foot putt. It's a nasty little break, and I'm gonna call him over on purpose. And I told the caddies and the two photographers. There's about 18 photographers following us, following our group. And I said, I'm gonna get him behind me. I want y'all to take a photo because I, I want one of the eight by ten. What years this? This was the late 80s, early 90s. So you're still, yeah, I'm, I'm still playing. I'm active. And so I got this putt, and I go, yo, come, out, come over here and help me. So he comes over and leans in behind me. I go, look at this thing. I mean, it was nasty putt, you know, big breaker. And uh, I go, what do you think? What do you, what do you think? Breaking, what do you think, yo? And he goes, better you than me, kid, and walked off. And that was, I go, there's one. There's one for it. But Yogi gave me the best compliment probably in, that anybody could, you know, with the Ted Williams and Mickey Mantles and uh, all the guys. You got to talk to those guys. I played nine holes with Mickey Mantle, and, and Ted was great. Was Ted a dick? Ted William. No, he was he was the man. Like you know, we've yeah. we've all heard that he was really stern. Tall, like yeah. whatever with that DiMaggio, was. DiMaggio was hard to to approach too with guys too. And 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 I just would say hi to him. I wouldn't ask him for an autograph because I heard so they, he he didn't like the sign. But also, but they that like, goes all the way they back like to greatness. If but you're that not goes all great. the way back to your Johnny Bench story. Johnny Johnny Bench paved the way for me to make the dollars I made. That's right. You, they, they couldn't. They couldn't afford me or Maddox right now in the league. There's no way they could afford us. We, we'd right. be making sixty million a year. Right. And Myself you'd be worth and Greg it. Maddox. It's it's because it's the going rate. I mean, they couldn't afford us. Well, the and going rate of greatness is. And and what's even better than that, you only got to go four innings. You know, you have <laughs> every nine. time I've talked to you about this, you've been like, what the fuck, man? I can, I can go four innings against anybody. Four innings. You don't even put your uniform in the wet bag, you know, in the laundry bag. Just hang you it up. It can't, it. it can't be dirty, right? So, but, uh, I mean, that's pretty cool. I'm pitching, too. I mean, the, the the you know, uh, Mickey Mantle. I got to play with How nine was that? golf with Mickey. He was awesome. He was awesome. I mean, it was so much fun. He, he, was he, he a good tired, athlete? Like, he was got he a good of, golfer? Um he was a good golfer. Most he played of you guys are Preston Trails in in Dallas, and uh, he shut it down after nine just because he got tired and it was hot. Had forearms on him like he was bailing hay when he was a kid, like a youngster. And um, you know, again, having the likes to be able to talk to Ted Williams and Carl Yaskrimski, having the opportunity. So did you talk about? T- hold on, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, but did you talk to Ted as if you're talking to a baseball player that's about to? Hit? That, that you're about to face and be like, hey, man, what what could I have done to screw it up? What could I have done to strike you out? So Ted's a hitter. He didn't like talking to pitchers at all. He wanted to keep <laughs> that distance between them. I think guys thought that about me. I had a more football mentality on the mound, you know, staring over my glove. Well, I saw, they, I saw an interview with you earlier today where – even now, you were like, "Well, I don't want to give away my secrets." I'm like, <laughs> "You're, you're yeah. a decade out of this." I had to deal. be careful because I called most of my game from the mound, and so when I when a catcher got traded to another team, I had to change my cadence in these sign stealing, you know, air of all this stuff that's going on. You just got to change your sign. You got to be. You got to be. Um, 
uh, creative, to say the least, with your signs and things like that Peyton you did. Like Manning playing against him. Yeah, defensive. Omaha. <laughs> Check it. Kill, 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 kill. Wichita. <laughs> kill, kill. Omaha. When it says Omaha, that means Wichita. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. So, um, so yeah, all, all that was uh, good stuff. But you got to understand with Ted Williams, um, you know, he was Mr. Williams my first two years. And then after I really established myself and he watched me win a couple of Cy Youngs and 20 games a couple of times, then it became Rocket. I got my nickname and – um, Who gave you that nickname? Uh, Bruce Hurst, left-handed pitcher, veteran pitcher. I struck out 20, and uh, he gave me the nickname, The Rocket, and it stuck. And uh, Hurst, he was a great, great – he's still a great friend. We t He texts all the time. And, um, you know, I had some great veterans on Jimmy Rice and Dwight Evans. But um, uh, I tell you what, Jack, I, I was fortunate because I got to play with two of the most historic teams in two of the most historic stadiums ever. There'll never be an old Yankee Stadium. New Yankee Stadium, New Yankee Stadium's awesome, but there were ghosts in that old one, man. I'm telling you what. We we had some games that were unbelievable when we came back from behind. What's cool is I played so long, my younger two boys had the opportunity to um, realize what was going on. And they How were old saying, were they? Um, they ended up uh, – Casey was probably uh, 12, Cody uh, 11, man. 10 or 11. And they are like – pops you know you got to you got the pitch and and in the batter's box right there right time. where yeah right where ted williams and uh and babe ruth played and i go yeah and they go and you pitched right there if you see the video or the uh still photo of lou gary giving his farewell speech i i stood right there i'm the luckiest i stood man. right yeah. yeah i'm the luckiest man that i was stood i got the pitch on that mound and and Babe Ruth was there also, and Joe DiMaggio. You know, I love playing for Mr. Steinbrenner. When did you, you play... know you were going to excel from the from the start? Like, did you know mm. coming up? Like, so one thing that struck me earlier, and I hate to keep bringing up earlier interviews because whatever, I wasn't there. But but it's funny to me that you were talking about the, the other guys in your high school. There you go. You're on it. That were like real power pitchers. Yeah, and, you're on and it. You were kind of a. You were a curveball thrower. Yeah, it's cool that you mention that and remember <laughs> it. I was the third best pitcher on my high school team. So, I mean, I tell the people that you hear the stories. It's not a story. It's legit. So, I was a better defensive end than I was a pitcher first baseman. I was the third best pitcher on our team. Had I was a 16-year-old uh, sophomore. I mean, a 16-year-old junior. Uh, I graduated at 17. Oh, so, I was young, young graduate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shut like, up, I was, Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> un, unlike uh, un, unlike Jim, I, I wasn't 17 in the sixth grade. I wasn't 18 in the <laughs> sixth grade. That was great. Hey, Jim. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the ninth <laughs> inning. We got three so, innings yeah. to go. <laughs> so yeah, we can. Hey, I'm telling you right now, Jack. We can do like three of these. So especially when he remembers these stories. So in high school, I had two dudes that were throwing 90, which was that's, unusual that's fast. uh go back to our david clyde story david clyde was like 93 miles an hour which was unheard of when he pitched it looked like somebody was landing an airplane there were so many ray guns and scouts on him and uh <clears throat> so in high school we had some dudes that threw hard they had a chance to go to a four-year school or even to the pros right away and right away so all the scouts were there a lot of college coaches were there when they they didn't wet the bed when they shit the bed Coach would bring me in in like the third or fourth inning. The pressure or whatever got to them. So they would shit the bed. Yeah, they couldn't throw strikes. When it mattered, they couldn't do it. Yeah, they threw hard, but they would wet the bed a little and bit. And when you got in. I threw 84, 85, tell me what right that down is, the middle. Man. And I had a little, oh, I was a, I was a pitcher. I mean, I just had good mechanics. Think, knock on wood, I had mechanics where my pitching coach really didn't jack with my mechanics all the way Were through. Were you ever thinking about, so, you know, like, okay. So I had that little involved, Bugs Bunny curveball. There's Dustin Johnson. Who says, ball must go in hole. And there's Phil Mickelson who says, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this. And it's going to fly like this. And it's going to do this and this. Yeah. Which one were you? Were you just what, like, what, you this got, must be and a you strike. Got, and you got a Jordan Spieth that says he aims small to miss small. So there's a lot of guys that have different philosophies. And it just depends on... You know, I don't want to say it on your podcast, but a lot of my uh, we can edit I, it. Yeah, I won't. I won't. Uh, I won't say any names, but most of my PGA friends, they're peanut brittle, man. 
What does that yeah, mean? I mean, I, I think they have a hard time when when something doesn't go perfectly. I, you know, they, they lose they, their shit. Yeah, exactly. And you just yeah. Did you? I mean, an, an when, when you're losing your shit, as you say, is over somebody's taking a, a photo in your backswing, or somebody hollering you the man, or you know, I got guys. I I answered. I mean, in visiting ballparks, I answered it. You know, so you're a to, to asshole. So you're a football what is, player. Jim would call me. Some of my best friends call me that. No, no, no I've heard it. No, yeah, you've heard it. Yeah, that's that's the hog nuts. Be, that's the best part it's about bad, being. It's yeah. bad when you get your your Hog. drink. It's bad when you. Is it bad when you get your drink at Starbucks and and you you're not paying attention and one of your good friends are telling them what name to put it under and they your your frappuccino's made and you come out of the restroom and they go hey we got a frappuccino for hog nuts and I go well, but be, hold up that would be me. Hold on, I really do want to be... know this because <laughs> when I first started to be friends with you, and we met and we had a yeah, good time, and yeah. I was like, "You thought my name was Hognuts?" No, I thought it was asshole. <laughs> yeah, I've been called. Yeah, exactly. And I answered to it, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, oh, man, you don't get seven Cy Youngs. You don't get 25, 24 years. Yeah, you don't get that shit unless somebody has a something to prove. Yeah. And when you have something to prove that big, a 12-year career, that's badass. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. But a 24-year career and, 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 and coming back and having some of the best years of your career in the last three years, you don't get that without a little ego. Yeah. I, I don't and know. if you want to cry about the yeah. ego, then, man, hey, then – you. Yeah, I don't know about it. I don't know about Zigo. I mean, I think I well, think a little it? bit. Little, uh, I think it's just you know I was um, you know I was ready to retire in Boston, and a dude came in a new GM and and sent about five of us packing and wished me good luck in the twilight of my career. I think I played another fourteen years or whatever it was. I don't know. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so it was a good twilight, and you remember that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. The memory yeah. of you of, of yeah. The, the, the well, because I wanted remember. to I wanted to play my. Because I poured my heart and soul out for 13 years in Boston. I wanted to play there and finish there. And that's my second home. I have a lot of great friends and fans and family still there now. They know they know my feelings. Um, but having said that, I've never experienced the, the joy of pitching in Toronto for a couple close friends there. I never had the experience of playing in Yankee Stadium. So did you go from Boston to Toronto? I did. I did. Then I had a chance to, to go Yankee. straight to – I had a chance to go straight from Boston to New York, but I thought it would just be a knife in the heart to the, you know, the Boston, the Red Sox Yankees rivalry it would have been just a stick of knife in. But, but I did hit it off very well with Mr. Beeston with the Blue Jays, and um, I loved it there. I was dealing, but they they weren't going to go anywhere. Did you catch a little blowback from, from from going to the Yankees? Because I, I never really heard that. Not not really. I mean a little bit, but the the rivalry got good. You got to understand when I was a Red Sox, Jack, the Yankees weren't very good. They had Donnie Mattingly and a few. I mean they had some good players, but they weren't competitive at all. Right. Our, and our by team, the way, for anybody that's watching, that's a huge baseball fan. I know, <laughs> like, I know that there's a lot of baseball fans that are watching this going. Ingram doesn't know shit, but I do understand. Yeah, some of these Rivalries. things. I mean, how can you not the Red Sox Yankees? And plus, so, you came and played for the Strohs. That's right. So, so with the Yankees, Red Sox, once uh, it, with the Red Sox in the late '80s, early '90s, the Blue Jays were our rival because they were winning. Then, when I went to the Yankees, Red Sox got new ownership. Then the then the then the knockdown dragout stuff started happening again because you're playing for one trophy. So they started getting and good. You, yeah, you start you started getting good. Like, you know, both teams are super competitive. Um, and then I was done, and next thing you know, a couple hundred people outside the gate in Houston, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to try and play. And it was nerve-wracking because I finally get to play at home. What do you mean a couple hundred people outside the gate? The radio station, everybody, they wanted me to come out of retirement. There's a radio station so mentioned a couple things. you moved back home to Houston? No, I, there was no moving. We always had our home there. We, we never – I had I a place never. in New York, and we never left. School and stuff for the boys, and <laughs> so we never left, but – I had a quite a few, quite a few fans, you know, tell me to let's do this in Houston, and now I'm 42 years old, 43 years old. So now now becomes a test amongst my mind and my body to be able to hold up and uh, for that me to me for me to win. I don't know what that one year I won 18 and four and won <laughs> the Cy Young it, was was incredible. And we <laughs> flipped the town for three years from a football city to a baseball town, and we got to the World Series. Didn't win it. But we got the likes of uh, Easy over there. Don't if you have indigestion, go go to the restroom. Was that the sweep? C season ticket holder. He was. We didn't like that. 
We didn't like it. No, no. But we got some of the guys that were. Uh, but I did get to tell my brother in law to fuck See? off. Too. See? Because <laughs> we beat the Cardinals. <laughs> Hey, I loved coming home, sleeping in How my own that? bed. It was fun because it's twenty minutes, you know, twenty minutes away from the ballpark. And uh, but not only did you pitch, man, you dominated. Yeah, we did good. We we played well. I was lucky. What was <laughs> wrong with the White Sox? Were they just better? We were, even though we lost four games. If you look at the games and uh, and uh, the way that the series turned out, we were never really out of a ball game. It was a close series, so and uh, yeah. Things. So, That's a funny but it was fun. Six six <laughs> World Series. A lot of them very emotional. And while I tell you for your viewers, um, the the coolest thing that I ever done, and we talk all this baseball and everything, but I played in six World Series. Two of the losses were very emotional. Nineteen eighty six, and then two thousand and one, which I, I I pitched my tail off in that series. But it was all with the stuff with nine eleven. I was New York Yankee, and Jack, what came of that? I got to go to General Myers asked me to go to the Middle East to see our men and women. And uh, when I was on Air Force Two heading over to Shannon, Ireland, President Bush called me on a plane. The Pentagon had printed up about 1,000 baseballs, 1,000 photos for him to sign on the way over there. A little nerve-wracking because General Myers said that, yeah, I'm going to send you out first to talk at every base that we go to. We uh, brought along the uh, comedian Drew Carey. Drew would tell some jokes, and it was he was great. And uh, but it was an experience for me that I'll never forget. Uh, I, anywhere I anything I do, J Dub knows this. Um, you know I had five uncles that it's served. Jim West. Yeah, Jimmy West is in the house. You <laughs> talking you're talking about a singer? And uh, <laughs> and a bullshitter. <laughs> uh, so 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 yeah. Between Jim West and I, in case y'all didn't know, we have seven Cy Youngs. Seven Cy between Cy Jim and I. Hey man, and me too, <laughs> and Jack. Yeah. So between the three of us, we, we got seven, seven Sonny Youngs and two ACMs. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, going going over to see our uh, men and women was it was incredible. I couldn't believe their energy. I couldn't believe how young our men and women were. You know, these people that yeah, you know, I, I was saying earlier, I had six uncles I think that served. My oldest brother went to Vietnam, and. Uh, is he still alive? He he's passed. My oldest brother's passed, and uh, I could not believe uh, the energy. Um, now I know why I feel safe when I go out on a mound in front of fifty five thousand people. Uh, I was pitching Game Three of the World Series when President Bush uh, forty three came out and uh, uh, threw out the first pitch, a perfect strike in that front of everybody with a bulletproof vest on at Yankee Stadium. Place lit up like a Christmas tree. I had the best. My pitching coach and I had the best view. Place a little like Christian Street, probably Can you fifteen. Imagine, man, that's that's 15, a moment. Fifteen snipers on top of the stadium. You could see their silhouettes of our guys. That's a moment in American history that, like, history tells us what we're supposed to remember. Yeah. And that moment that you were there for in real time, yeah, is a moment that they'll write about in history books or whatever. And it doesn't matter your political views, right or left. That was a moment where it was like, oh. That's what we do. Yeah. That's cool. He, he went out there, that. bulletproof vest, kicked up his leg, and threw a perfect strike right down Broadway. And uh, other than that, it was a little nerve-wracking because we were down 0-2. <laughs> other and, I, than and, that. I, and, and in game three, you can't lose game three when you're the swing man. That's why Joe Torre, who we call the godfather, Joe Torre, I mean, straight out of a movie scene, I'm putting my spikes on in the stadium, the Yankee Stadium, tying my shoes, and I look up, and here's my manager standing right in front of me. I stand up in my chair. And he looks at me and goes, I need you tonight. I said, I got you, Skip. He goes, no, I, I, I friggin' need you tonight. I said, I got you. He leaned in and kissed me on this cheek. Started, I said, no, no, don't do that. I don't want to be a made man. I don't want a horse head in my bed. <laughs> Why <tonight."> not, man? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the godfather, Mr. Torrey. So Joe was a great manager. I mean, he managed. I mean, we, we had an all-star at every position, so he could just But I also love how you said he, he failed more than he succeeded. Yeah, Joe was, before he got there, they said all the papers said that, uh, you know, clueless Joe and – and he'd been fired five That's times. That's pretty good. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Could you have been a pro golfer? Could you have been a pro basketball? Like, could you have been a – If I'm playing against Jim West, I can be – I mean, I can make a lot of you money You know what I'm talking arts. about, man. Like, if you really dedicated yourself to anything – I think like, you have to like, work at it, When yeah. you're a great athlete – I see where you're going. I see where you're going. You, you can be great at anything you Yeah, do. I think it's the mental part of the game. I think when – I think before – I think every, every night that you come out, um, you're going to go do the same venue tomorrow – you're going to have different people there that may have not seen you. It might be that, and they might be spending their first dollars on to see you. 
Right. So you got to bring it. When I'm driving in from New England from my house in Framingham, Mass., I'm driving 30 minutes into Fenway Park. On the way in, I see seven different license plates, you know, from different parts of, you know, different states, New Hampshire, you know, Maine, you know, uh, every, you know they're coming from everywhere. you know Pittsburgh. they're coming for they you. They counted that fifth day. And so and they and might not have ever seen you before. <laughs> Never seen me work. And it's, it's showtime. Do you know that story about Joe DiMaggio? Mm. Where he was, he, he had an injury or something. And he, uh-huh. was, he was in AAA or AA or whatever it was. And one of the guys that was kind of a career minor leaguer, which is fine, but Joe DiMaggio was running out everything, sliding, diving. And he goes, hey, man, you're going to be in the majors in a couple days. And he goes, there's a kid out here that has never seen the great Joe DiMaggio play. And if this is the only time he gets to see me, I want him, I want him to see me at yeah. my best. Yeah, that's rare. That, it's that, kind that, of the that thing, right? Rare. Yeah, it can be rare at times. Absolutely. <laughs> But, um, did you ever have to go have a stint down in the minors, or, or every time you got injured, did you just come? No, back? no, I did, I did, and and your rehab starts, uh, or some of the toughest starts as a big leader to go back and face the minor league guys because they're all giddy to hit you. They, you, they yeah, they you can't <laughs> you can't get a fastball by a minor leaguer. I'm telling you, I mean, you they have to just work on your brain. Yeah, take you oh, out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They they want to they want to they they're lacing their shoes up in the locker room thinking about the fastball I they're would. facing it off of you. Yeah. So, but just like I tell Jim West, you might not get a hit off me, but you might get hit. <laughs> <laughs> and he, hey, he bruises easy too. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, he took me deep in, in Minute Maid. Oh no, 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 J Dub. I took J Dub for his birthday. So are you on him? Oh yeah. We got J Dub hitting against Clemens. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I took J Dub to his birthday in college. No, he was a great. No, no, he was a football player. He's a quarterback, and is back and wore leather helmets, no mask. Just look at him. Look, every, do a close up. I knew that. <laughs> Either that or you're a boxer. I was one of the best. One of the best. He took me to. He yeah. said that none of his linemen ever blocked for him. Never. You were a quarterback at, at uh, Groom. Southern. Groom. Where? Groom, Groom Texas. Texas. Oh, high school. High school. Yeah. Did y'all win a state championship? Uh, we got semifinal. Close. Oh, that's there we go. Yeah, second go. place. That's right. Second place. Or first loser. Football? Yeah, no. Back first loser. <laughs> second place. Hey, no. You back can't back talk back. shit to him. We can. You can't you talk can. shit to him. <laughs> peanut <laughs> gallery. Hey, What's you shut up? the fuck up. <laughs> hey, peanut <laughs> gallery. That's bullshit. <laughs> this is my man. <laughs> No, no. So J, I, I, J Dub. I said we're almost surprised. We jumped on a plane, his big birthday bash, and I said we're going to Fenway Park. I got tickets above the Green Monster. Fifty. Fiftieth birthday party. He didn't know it. I said we're going to. I said thirty-five years ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. At least, at least that. Yeah. How old are you? Sixty-five right now. So fifteen years ago. Yeah. Took him to Fenway Park, Green Monster parts. And then I said, listen, we're going to go early, bring some workout gear, and I got it. it. Like Put him in the batter's box. Like part in the seats. I get it. Where, yeah. It yeah. was like. And I, I put him in the batter's box at Fenway Park and threw BP to him. That's what friends do. And I said, and he and he hit one pretty good, and he looked at it. So the next one I put right in the middle of his back. He stared at it, and he squealed like a pig. Right in the middle of his back. <laughs> he squealed. He squealed like a pig. <laughs> Bitch, and, you ain't gonna hit me. I, 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 hey, parts. No, I thought it was that, or I said he was doing this on the ground. I said, hey, do you got contacts? You looking for your contacts? You got a contact that fell out? <laughs> and he called. He said he he called me a couple of f words. He called me. A, yeah. Well, I came back strong. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. He did. After he got done, after I got done wiping the drool and the sap off of him, he yeah. he rallied back. That's what I love about you, too, hey, man. Then he said he tells everybody he took me deep. You know where he took me deep? He I, took me deep, short to the grass, about <laughs> 150 <laughs> feet. He had, right bli- above the he had blisters on his hand. Did he get a single? <laughs> you got to do the butter story. Okay, right, butter, Kevin, the butter story. Where is it? All right, All right. butter story. Say, listen, you got to tell me about the- This is a New York boy. You'll love this. Oh, you're going to love this. This is a butter story. All right. All right. I'm going to let you prompt <laughs> you got, it. You got to prompt it. <laughs> hey, man. Things are hey, man, I'm real good on the so fly. I'm not, I'm not real good on the fucking one, two, three, go. Jack, <laughs> you got to go in like it. Yeah, tell, so tell hey, me man. About hey, rewards. shut up. Okay, fuck off. <laughs> tell me about the butter story. Well, the butter story is a good one, and uh, it's legit. So to tell you to tell you about the butter story and, and, and keeping everything in perspective and finding out who you really are and keeping you on point as a person, 
no matter how many Cy Youngs you got or who you think you are, Seven. Movie, movie stars, anybody, anybody can wear them one, you know. <laughs> so, in, so, 1986, I win my first Cy Young Award. But I also get a little more hardware. I win the most valuable player of the league. So, I'm picking up two chunks of hardware. I'm 23 years old, maybe. In New York City, I'm a Boston Red Sox. I got to go to New York. So, I'm going to enemy territory, Yankees, you know, or everything. I'm up on the head table, 1,000 people in the audience. Everybody's in their penguin suits, but my bow tie, rented, you know. You got yours too? Yeah, I rented it. It's as cheap as it can be. <laughs> and uh, I'm up on the table. Is this your? This is like my second year. 24 and 4, won the Cy Young and the MVP. Just got my nickname, The Rocket. Up on the dais with the likes of DiMaggio, Mantle, Lou Pinella, a bunch of Yankees, players, Donnie Mattingly. Who's who's up on the table, right? I'm pretty nervous. Typical dinner. Guys serve me, looks like Super Mario Brother, Yankee fan, got him a mustache. Rubber chicken. Looks like looks like Super Mario Brother, Yankee fan looking at me, slamming my plate up in front of me. He's like, shit, what are you cake. doing there, man? You beat our Yankees, you know, suck your Red Sox. And Slams that up there, and yeah, you're right. I got the cold piece of chicken, uncooked piece of steak, like you always get, little dinner roll, and a book, and a damn baked potato. Right? <laughs> I get up there and nervous, and I do my speech and do everything like that. And I'm on Mister to everybody, Mister Jackson, Mister Reggie Jackson, Mister Ted, but Mister, I'm you know I'm a, I'm a kid. Now fast forward, 1987 rolls around. I win 20 for the second time back to back. Win my second Cy Young Award. Going back to New York, get my hardware. Now, popping the collar, I'm feeling myself, feeling good about who I am. I'm the rocket. Two the side, rocket. The rocket. Two side <laughs> young. It's got posters and drink milk and all this stuff, you know. I'm up there. You, were table again. you got milk? Oh, yeah. I got. I had a growth chart for the kids. <laughs> drink milk. And I'm up here at 6'4", and you can drink your milk, kids. You can be 6'4", like the rocket. Right. So now I'm up, on a, up there at the table, and I'm with these guys now. But now I'm like first name Reggie. I'm Ted, you what's know, up, Reggie? Rocket, what's, what's up, up Rocket, Ted? you know, what's up, well, yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm feeling good, thousand people in the audience, penguin suit on, here comes Super Mario, Yankee dude, man, mustache, and put my plate up there, <clears throat> looking at me like, you're a piece of, sh you know, you Yank you're you Red Sox, Red so you beat my <laughs> Yankees, you suck, Rocket. I go, hey, my man, he put it up there, there's my cold piece of chicken, uncooked piece of steak, throws me a dinner roll up there. And then when he puts the dinner roll up there, he puts me that little cube of butter goes with it, right? So I'm talking, I'm talking big stuff. I'm being a big shot up there. I'm doing my thing. And here he comes again, coming this way. And I, I got to stop him. He only gave me one cube of butter. Now I got a baked potato. I need some butter for my baked potato, Jack. I mean, come on. <laughs> of course. So I say, hey, my man, hold up a second. Hold up a second. He, he looks at me, blows me right off. Like a like J-Dub said, uh, an 8 o'clock college class. Blew me right off. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so here he comes so now i'm talking my sh my shit's getting cold and i see him coming from afar again here he comes again i'm gonna get him i say hey my man hey hold up man i'm gonna need some i need some butter for my and he looks at me and blows me off i said damn man so now i'm kind of messing around with my food my dinner rolls cold my baked potatoes going cold here he comes i said i'm getting him I said hold on guys i was talking i go hey you stop the conversation yeah i said hold up my man hold up hold up <laughs> I said, stop. Bitch. Yeah, yeah. I said, dude, hold up a second. I said, um, I've been trying to get you for 15 minutes. So you know who I am, right? He goes, yeah, I know who you are. And I said, man, all I'm trying to do is get another cube of butter for my baked potato. That's all I'm trying to do. I was trying to get you, but shit's cold now. But you, you know who I am. He goes, yeah, I, I know who you are. And he goes, evidently, you don't know who I am. I go, no, I don't. He goes, I'm in charge of the fucking butter. <laughs> And he walked off. <laughs> we all got our place in the world. Wow, I know where I sit now, baby. Now I know who you are. <laughs> he said, he goes, I don't. He goes, I like you. Know. You could have been a good pitcher. <laughs> he said, I know you now, baby. You could have been a good so pitcher. So I just went, I went. And everybody did what y'all did, laughed on both sides. Man, I went, I'm, I'm just going to be I'm right. I'm good. I'm good. good. <laughs> and I'm just going, yeah, I'm good. Evident you don't know who I am, do you? And he goes, no, I know who you are. I said, he goes, evidently, you don't know who I am. I'm in charge of goddamn butter. What happened? Oh, Jack, be careful. Back in the Jack, be careful. Jack, be quick. Jack, Jack jumped over that candlestick. Don't break that fucking beer bottle. So there's your butter story. 
That's good yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's how we get. That's how we keep our shit together. Yeah, it keeps it right. It keeps it level. Apparently, you know, I'm in charge of the bunny. Because evidently, you don't know who I am. You know, straight enjoying my stay. Hey, picture up. I'm walked I, on. I, I, want, I want this picture, roll. too. That's you know, I'll just, be, I'll just enjoy my stay. Hey, picture up. Thanks for doing I, that. That was awesome. I want, I want this roll, too. That's good to see you, baby. Oh, it's good to see y'all. Hey, man, thanks for doing that. Hey, man. Make it look good, Jack. We will. Hey, thanks for doing Oh, it's good to see y'all. Good to see you, baby. If you enjoyed this video and watch it on YouTube, tap right here to subscribe. If you're watching on social media, don't forget to like, follow, and share. Thanks for watching.